Hi, welcome to How to Repair. Is your fan oven not heating? Is it tripping the electricity supply? In this video, I'm going to show you how to test for a faulty element and also using a multimeter to do a continuity check on the element, an ohms reading on the element, and I will also be showing you how to test the element to make sure power is getting through to it. Because on some occasions, you may have either a faulty thermostat, a faulty selector switch, or the timer is not set correctly or could be faulty. The first thing you will need to do is remove the cooker from the housing if it is built in. Then you'll need to remove the panels to give you access to the element. Then you will need a multimeter. It does not need to be an expensive multimeter. A cheap one will suffice. It only needs to be able to read voltage, an ohms reading and continuity. You will need a Phillips screwdriver on most cookers and I do advise using a set of pin nose pliers because when removing the wires some of these edges are quite sharp. Before working on any appliance do make sure that the electricity is disconnected from the supply. The next thing we need to do is actually establish which is the fan oven element. The fan oven element is normally the closest element to the fan motor. Taking these two terminals off you will then be able to do a test on the element. Turning your meter on, turn it to continuity, you would want to establish that the meter is working correctly. Touch the two probes together and you should get a reading on the actual meter. Then you will be able to do a test across the circuit on the element and this will establish that the element is normally good. But a more advanced way of understanding the wattage of the element is to use Ohm's law. There is a calculator available for doing this and I'll put a link in the description below. Turning your meter on to ohms and I'm setting it to the lowest ohms reading 200, I would then be able to go across the two probes and get an ohms reading of resistance. This is approximately 28.7. Entering the voltage of the appliance into the actual calculator, you would then be able to put the voltage 28.7 ohms resistance and the calculator will establish that the element has a value of approximately 1800 watt. This will vary from cooker to cooker. Now if your cooker is tripping the electricity this is a different type of fault. This is earth leakage and this means electricity is going through to the chassis on the cooker and taking out the RCD on your consumer board. The only way of testing an element correctly is a w with a very expensive instrument called an insulation tester or sometimes known as a mega. But a cheap way of understanding if your cooker is tripping the electricity because of a fan of an element fault is to actually use some insulation on both of the electrical connections. Make sure that they are fully insulated. Then you would be able to put the cooker back into the power supply test all the functions on the cooker. If it does not trip the electricity, then you can presume that it is a faulty fan of an element. As you will see with this element, if I bring it up to the camera, this element actually blew and opened up the side of the casing on the element. This caused it to trip the RCD or electrical supply. Sometimes it is visible on the element, but on other occasions it is not. Now that we've established that the element is good, but the oven is still not heating. We need to establish whether we're getting voltage to the element. Now we need to reconnect the element up. So I'm putting the two probes on and this test that we're going to be doing is live and should only be done by someone who is competent with electrics. I'm then going to turn my multimeter on and I've set it to the 240 volt range. But for ease of videoing, I'm going to put some crocodile clips on the actual terminals and connect this to the two terminals on the element. This will read if any voltage is going through to the actual element. Putting that on, double checking around the cooker that everything is safe, then grabbing hold of the power supply, plugging it into the electricity and turning it on. The cooker is now got 240 volts electric. But what I must remember to do is set the timer because if you do not set the timer, the relay will be open, meaning no power can go through to the actual cooker. I'm then turning it to the fan oven setting. And as you can see, the fan is rotating, but we have no voltage at the element. 
This is because we have not set the temperature on the oven. When I turn the thermostat on, we then get 240 volts electricity to the element, so we know it's good. But if you do not have electricity going through to the element, you either have a problem with bad wiring, you have a problem with the selector switch, which is quite common, and I have done many videos to assist you in diagnosing problems with selector switches. You may also have a problem with the thermostat. I have done other videos on this as well. But on more modern cookers today, some of the cookers are using circuit board technology to control the operation of the oven. This replaces the selector switch. This means that you have relays that open and shut to send power to the individual devices on the cooker, and you have NTC sensors which measure the temperature. This differs compared to the normal thermostatic system, which is just a set of points that open and shut, which is controlled by a capillary tube that goes into the oven to measure the temperature. This tube is full of gas. As the gas expands, it then turns the thermostat off, and what happens is when it turns the thermostat off, it disconnects the power to the element. I hope I've explained everything correctly. There's one other device that can cause problems on a cooker, and this is the relay on the actual timer. Normally, a relay is open when you first plug it in. Once you have set the time, the relay is shut, allowing electricity to flow through to the selector switch, the thermostat, and all the components. But if the relay became faulty, then of course there would be no power going to your oven. And there we go. If you do need any parts for your cooker, do remember you can support the website by buying the parts office. And remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for any future informative videos with regards appliance repairs. Thanks very much indeed for watching. And if I've really helped you, you can always support the website by clicking on the Buy Paula Beer page. And that will donate to the website to help us keep going and making these videos for you. Thanks very much indeed for watching.